Hi, this is John Carney, Product Engineer at Cadence, and this is a how-to video to fan out BGAs and other devices for high-speed layout. The first thing you're going to want to do is to fire up the fan out command. The fan out command gives you a radial fan out utility, which is very commonly used for BGAs, that's going to specify the direction of the fan out pattern you're going to get. So if you have the center button clicked here, you're going to get a completely radial based fan out pattern where starting from the center, you get northeast, northwest, southeast and southwest patterns on the BGA. If you really only want to go one specific direction or another, you can click on any one of these other quadrants and then refan out the device that way. You can also use this in combination with the selection filter. And if you wanted to, you could really just go into the fan out command and just select certain pins of that component and then fan those things out to get pins fanned out in a certain way. So the fan out command can work on the entire component or an individual set of pins. The next thing we're going to talk about is this trace width pull down here. And you'll notice that when I ran that fan out command that it produced different widths for different signals of nets. So like the ground net, the one V8 volt net, those got large widths and the other signals got smaller trace widths and these got even smaller trace widths. Those are all driven by the constraints that are assigned to the different nets in the design. Before I start assigning constraints, I want to show you another helpful thing to do, and that is to assign different colors to different power and ground and buses and net groups in the design. For example, under the selection filter, if you have net selected and then zoom in and select that 1.8 volt net, you can use the properties panel over here to assign a specific color to that net. Once you do that, it then makes it easier to identify and find that net in the design. You can also do that for things like buses. Let's say you want to see an entire bus. Let's say you want to highlight this entire bus to be a certain color in the design. If you give that bus a color, then you can now easily see all those pins of that bus are the same color, which helps you when it comes to constraining nets in the design. Generally speaking, before you start any routing using Cadence PCB solutions, you want to set up constraints. This can all be done using this dot constraint panel. Let's first start looking at the constraint for this bus. Select an object on the canvas, and then you have different types of constraints that you can set up. You can set up basic physical rules, electrical rules, and spacing rules. So in this case, we're going to set up the basic physical rule. I'm going to create a new rule set and I'm just going to call it. You can create as many physical rule sets as you want, but the general idea is if you have a whole bunch of nets that are going to have the same rules, you should create a rule set and then you can apply that rule set to all the nets over and over again. So define the rule once, apply the rule to all the nets. So now that you have that rule set there, you can then specify what you want to have for the neck width and the minimum line width. Let's say you want the minimum line width to be 0.18. You can type that in there. You can type in your differential pair rules and you can even specify which via you want to be used for that net when you go through different layer transitions. If you need to create a new via, you can hit this create via button here and then you're presented with a create via wizard where you can specify the finish hole diameter, pad diameter, and solder mask expansion. So if let's say if you wanted a finish hole diameter of 0.9, pad diameter of 1.3, and a solder mask expansion of 0.05, and you could give it a name of 9 underscore 1 underscore 3, whatever you want to call it, whatever naming pattern you use, and hit create via. You'll notice now that that via is included in the via list that is used when you fan out this design. If you want, you can use the pad stack editor to do that as well. Then you can also show a chart showing you how those different vias are going to go through different layers in your design. And you can even expand that out if you need to make that bigger. And this is where you can control the order or the preference, which via gets used first, which via gets used second. 
So that's how you set up basic physical rules. You can also set up basic spacing rules. So if you want that net to use a default spacing rule, you can set that default spacing rule or you can create another spacing constraint set. And here is where you can specify the pad to pad, line to line and pad to shape rules that you want to be assigned for this, in, in this case, this bus or whatever net you assign it to. If you need to have more control, you can go into advanced and then you can specify more explicit spacing for different types of objects. For example, now you can specify different spacing between via pads and pin pads to every other object. And you can even specify different spacing per layer if you want to do that. So you can get pretty advanced with the constraints. Same thing with physical. You can go into the advanced rules and then you can specify now a neck width, a min width and a max width and you can specify different via stacking options for HDI type of via stacking. But for now, we're just going to stick with the basic rules. So these constraints that you set here for those nets are going to then apply when you are in the command. So when you go into any fan out command and you see this option that says trace width constraint, it's going to use the constraint set that you applied or that you specified for all of those nets for that BGA. So the idea is define your constraints first and then use the constraint width when you run fan out or any particular routing. The next control you'll have access to is this pin via spacing control. And again, you can set this to be something like centered where it's going to try to center those vias right in the middle of all the pins or if i'm going to use like a, an extremely small value to see how that takes effect you put that in and then you get the vias very close to the pin those spacings are going to help you when you start routing out from those vias onto the different layers of designs and that's going to allow you to determine how many of routed traces you can get through these vias on individual layers Quite often with BGAs, you're trying to balance routability and manufacturability, and you often need to try to reduce the trace width down of all the signals coming into a BGA, but you really only want to do it for as short of distance as possible. So under the BGA, shrink all the trace widths. Once you get outside the BGA, go back to the nominal trace width. The easiest way to do that is to use a constraint region. So here, for example, we have a constraint region and the rule set is BGA. The way constraint regions work in Allegro and ORCAD X is to draw a constraint region and then apply the rules to the constraint region. Drawing a constraint region is done using the shape command. When you go into the shape command, it's going to ask you what the shape use is going to be. So it could be a conductor shape, like a big copper shape, or you can choose a constraint region. You can then specify which layer it's going to be on. If it's going to be on all layers, outer layer, inner signal layers. So you can have nested constraint regions if you need to have specific rules for different layers. In this case, we'll choose all. This little eye here is just controlling whether or not the constraint region you draw is going to be visible while you draw it or not. And then you can do this one of two ways. You can either create the rule set name first and then draw the create constraint regions, or you can draw the regions and give them a name later. So for now, I'll choose to use a rule set named BGA. I'll show you how to make them in just a second. And then you have a couple of different drawing modes. So you can draw a polygon, or in this case, I'll choose to draw a rectangle. And then you just click and hold your mouse and then you draw the rectangle and you can make it as big as you want. Once that constraint region is in place, if you have multiple BGAs that are all using the same constraint region, you can select the constraint region you've drawn, and then you can just, I'm using control C and control V, and you can just paste those all over your design. So you can put one underneath every single BGA that you have. You can even put those constraint regions into the library symbol if you would like. To create those constraint regions, you use the constraint manager. You can go under tools and choose constraint manager to open it, or from this docked constraint panel, you can click on the constraint manager icon there. 
once you're in the constraint manager under the different categories over here where you have electrical rules physical rules spacing rules etc under these categories you'll notice there's a specific folder for the regions in your design <clears throat> here you'll see this design has four different regions or region names again remember that this one bga region name could exist in 10 different places in the layout and then here you have all the physical rules that apply inside of that specific region. So this is basically saying inside this region or inside any region called BGA, the minimum line width is 0.1. Inside of a region called Conflex, the minimum line width is 0.3. To create a new region name from here, you can click your right mouse button and say create region. And then you just type in the region name. And then now you have another region. You can create the rules you want here. That region will be available for you when you go into the add shape command, where you can specify again, if you choose shape use is a constraint region, you'll now have that rule set available from here. You can also at any time select any constraint region and in the properties panel, pick from an existing rule set down here. Now, if you want to get that constraint region to exactly match the outline of this component, that can be done. You're going to want to select one of these shapes and copy it and paste it into a constraint region. So I'm going to hover over this component and I'm going to use my tab key to cycle through these different objects, these different stacked objects in the design database until I get to the place on top. I'm going to select the place on top and then from the right mouse button, I'm going to choose copy or you can choose control C. You then have a copy of that on your cursor and then from your right mouse button, you can choose paste special or control D. Paste special lets you take what you've copied, modify it to another layer class or subclass and then paste it back in. So in this case, using this paste special command parameters, I'm going to say I want to you to paste that in as a constraint region on all layers and I'm going to pick a rule set called BGA. And so in the paste special command, it recognizes the origin of the original object you pasted as a snap point. So it by default wants to snap this right to where that original thing was pasted. So you can use that and now you can paste that constraint region right there where you had it before. The last option you may want to use for BGA fan out is this one option for via and pad. Occasionally, if you have super density designs, you want to just shoot the vias right into the pad, you can do that as well. Talk to your fabricator, of course, before you do that.